In sports, if you want to be the best, there are no off days. Greetings and welcome into the No Off Days podcast. I'm what? Scott Smith and trying out new voices this week. I got Chris Cato to my left. BK's in the booth. Uh, what? What were you going to say? Hi, everybody. That's my new voice. No, I, I, I was just surprised at <laughs> your. Uh, you had a very, uh, very kind of creepy intro there. I liked it. Well, I know that uh, the topic of conversation uh, usually on most shows, right out of the gates, is T-shirts. And we are in Christmas movie season, and, and, and you got you got one of the great ones here. I'm bringing it, so, yeah. You, so you know, want to describe it. to our audio audience what I'd you're rather, I'd rather you describe it. Well, it, you no, have a quote there that I'm not sure is made <laughs> ready for TV, but uh, it's uh, what? Cousin it's, it's Eddie's co- RV Maintenance. Cousin Eddie's RV Maintenance, yeah. And then it's got his little uh, quote down there where he, you know, remember Clark yeah. walked yeah. out, and he was yeah. out there uh, relieving yeah. his um, right. waste area of the RV, and he said, Merry Christmas. Okay. We're, yeah, you we know got, what was yeah, full. We yeah. got it. We got it. Is that uh, where is your in the hierarchy of Christmas movies? Uh, where does that one rank? Oh, uh, that's in top three. Okay. Yeah. Well, now I'd be curious. Have we discussed this before? I feel like we I don't think we. It year. seems like we should have. Okay. But I don't, well, give I don't me think give me your top three Christmas movies. Well, I'm a sucker for the uh, Christmas story. Okay. You know I, yeah. that one's if that she one's on, out. I just yeah I'll just leave it on in the background, and then I would probably go this one, National Lampoons, and then Home Alone somewhere yeah. in there yeah okay. very well, good what do you think uh similar that's my number one so mm-hmm. I watch it every year um and you know gotta watch it alone it's not really <laughs> f- good for the kids but one day yeah. you'll be able to sit one, down and one chuckle day with we'll them. enjoy yes. it together um <laughs> and then uh probably number two uh, just out of sheer volume i mean we we watch home alone that we do watch it as a family so home alone's a classic um and then I really enjoy Elf as well, so I would say that's probably my top. Oh yeah, three. Elf. Elf is great too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Die Hard number four. No, I got Die Hard in there. I, I just typically don't watch it during the Christmas season, but I am one of those that would say yes, it is a Christmas. Certainly, movie. it yeah. wouldn't be the same if it were set in August. No, exactly. I yeah. All right. Uh, BK, come on in. You could join the discussion. What's yeah. your favorite Christmas movie of all time? Well, it's got to be Christmas Vacation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. But Elf's up there. I mean, I, I enjoy Elf. Do you have a favorite Cousin Eddie quote or Clark quote that you'd like to throw out there? One that's not on your T-shirt. Uh, I, I mean, well, Edna? What, or was that the original? Which No, that was the original. That one. was the original uh, yeah. Family Vacation. Out to Wally yeah. World. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, the, the, I think the... Him yeah, emptying out the tanks. So the the S are being full. Yeah, so yeah. many good ones though. Yeah. <laughs> the blessing. Yeah. yeah, I love that guy. Too. Yeah, <laughs> the dicky um, he wore at the family Christmas party. You know, yeah. last year I went to a Christmas party and I wore that exact outfit. The the cousin the, Eddie. Yeah. With the did Dickie people get that. it? Did they? Uh, no, I think oh. no. Uh, maybe like uh, one or two people, and then everybody else thought that like that was what I was actually wearing. <laughs> and so there's a you know you vote on the the best costume. And I didn't win. I you, thought for sure I had. I mean, won. it was to a T. But I don't think there was enough people that that knew the reference. So. Somebody in a big elf suit probably won. I know. Goodness. It was, yeah, it was a shame. All right, very good. What do we got on today's program here, BK? Oh, we got a lot of stuff. Talking college football once again. Uh, we also got a guest picker coming in. See how if he can mm. beat Mark Wilson from last week. Martin Gramatica. There we go. Coming in. Wow. Bucks I, I feel like great. he's going to have some inside knowledge. The guest he picker. Might. Yeah. That's good. Did we keep Mark's receipts last week? How did he do in the picks? I, I know I he did not go back and check. Okay. Actually, that's, no, the, that's good. the one thing about uh, pick segment. We don't. It's gone. Yeah. It, Once it, it happens, it's gone. You know? okay. All right. Good. And if you're watching on Sunday night, then <laughs> it's already too late anyway. That's why you need to actually. I know he got. The I know one he got right. Washington beating he Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. FSU yeah. right. He did get that one right. That's for sure. Yeah. Ah, Sorry. Still, still hurts. <laughs> okay. Very good. Because, and then at the end of the show. In a show, bowl season, I'm going to test your knowledge about the bowl games coming up. How well you know them. Oh, I am ready. Not uh, not well. I mean. We've got a Pop-Tarts Bowl this year, BK. Have you seen this? Where the, the mascot is the prize. It's a giant Pop-Tart, and the I winning team gets this, to yeah. take a bite that off does, of the, the mascot. What kind of Pop-Tart is it? Is I don't think they've so. said. I okay. don't think. But probably strawberry. That's kind yeah, of like they do a, a old faithful. Yeah. I would I would want brown sugar, brown but I would still good. if it's not brown sugar, I'll still bite whatever the mascot is. Yeah. That was okay. my. Can uh, we just pluck question. that bite right there that he just said, and then use that to promote the show? <laughs> I'll take a bite out of that mascot. Yeah, no whatever it is, I'll bite it. Yeah. All right, very good. We'll catch up with you in just a little bit. BK, uh, if you're listening and you want to watch, go to fox13news.com/nodpod. If you're watching on Sunday night, let's say, and you said. Why are you giving me picks to games that are already over? 
Well, you should download the podcast and you get it earlier in the week. Uh, you can subscribe by taking out your phone, zap that QR code on the screen, and there you can find all of our shows. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, you will have a lot more fun and a lot more <laughs> uh, meaningless movie quotes. Uh, do you have one more for us? A Christmas store, a Christmas vacation? I'll do one more just where at that party scene. The eggnog. Yeah, where the eggnog and, and Clark says, uh, could I freshen your eggnog, get you something to eat, drive you out in the middle of nowhere and leave you for dead? There we go. Perfect. Are you serious, Clark? All right. Yeah. Let's get into this thing. You mentioned it off the top. Of course, Oregon lost that game. Uh, and though, you know, my heart was wrenched all weekend, I have moved on until this moment. I thought I had suppressed <laughs> that, but maybe not. Uh, but the biggest story, of course, was that uh, FSU didn't make the final, the, the final four. So, you know, I, I think that frustration has been felt all week uh, from all places, right? Uh, that this, this maybe isn't the way that it, it's supposed to have gone down. I know that you probably don't take any issue with it being a Bama fan because uh, you're no. one of the beneficiaries. Uh, hey, 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 you're not helping me. I've had people coming at me all week because of this. Well, they should. I, I didn't. Why? I didn't want it this way. I think way. you're partially to blame. I, no, I, I didn't want it this way. I would have put FSU in. Okay. Good. I did. I went to bed at, Saturday at the night. Con, at the cost of? At the cost of Bama. Really? Yeah. I was ready to gripe all offseason about them keeping an SEC champion out. I was. Yeah. Well, he says this now, you know. I, I promise. Oh, okay. I promise you. All right. So, let's, let's go there. The blame game. Who is to blame? And I want BK to be a part of this conversation as well. Um, who deserves the blame for this being the result? I think that you know, kind of the, the low-hanging fruit is obviously the committee, but maybe you want to take it a different direction. Yeah, you want to come to me first? Um, if BK's yeah. ready, let's hear it. Uh, who, who are you blaming, BK? I mean, it, the, yeah, the low-hanging fruit is the committee. But honestly, if I was Florida State, I would really be upset with the ACC hmm. because they, they, there was four committee members that had ties to the ACC. And I know it's supposed to be an impartial, you know, you go in there and just be obje as objective as you can. But come on, you know, you got some guys that's got the, the chairman. Yeah, Luke you know, Corgan. The, yeah, NC State's NC, athletic director. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so you, you just—I would be upset that hey, guys, we got 13 and 0, you know, undefeated champion, and you can't get us across the finish line here. So, so they didn't lobby hard enough. That's what you. Are I contending. yes. Now, you know, there's also other things factors into it, but I—I I mean, if that was me, that's who I'd be upset with the most, and and and. Uh, because I, I'm, I'm still stunned. And plus, the, just the polling itself, I don't think they did favors to, to Florida State by putting me at four after. Just so it seems like the, the committee just changed their priorities in, in grading these guys, I guess. Well, don't yeah. they deserve, they, they kind of reserve the right to to say last week's polling doesn't they have say, any yeah, That's what they say, is that they start over every week. Right, right. but it's almost like the, you know, like NHL referees, if it's a penalty in the you know, first five minutes of the game, then it should be a penalty in the last five minutes of the game. And, and I don't think that was the case. I mean, if they didn't think without, they didn't have a quarterback for two weeks. So it, Florida State, if, that, if they truly believe that they were not a, as, you know, a top five team. They could they, have moved him down already is what you're saying. And then you could have avoided all this. Said, yeah. hey, prove it to us in the ACC championship. If your team is as good, you know, with Jordan Travis, with your backup quarterback, who they thought it was going to be at the time, mm -hmm. then, then show it to us. And mm -hmm. then they could move him back up. But I think the fact they had him up there at number four, the committee was maybe thinking, okay, hey, maybe, you know, Georgia will win and they'll take care of everything. Or... Florida State will get beat, and they'll take care of everything because, you know, they did, really didn't want to drop them out after they lost their starting quarterback. Yeah, if if you're saying whatever the scenario and that'll take care of everything, that exposes the problem <laughs> right there, right? Like, you need a certain outcome to go a certain way to validate where you're placing teams in the rankings because if all shakes out, you know, a different way, then then now you're gonna ex be exposed a little bit, and that's what happened, right? Yeah. So I mean, I agree because I think the system itself is the is the real problem here with four conference champions. I mean, four spots, and there's five power conferences. Right. I think that's you know it was flawed. In fact, that it hasn't happened up until now. It's absolutely amazing. And you know what? We've talked about this 12-team playoff, obviously, ad nauseum last week. If you didn't watch the episode, go back and watch the best 25 minutes of your life right there. <laughs> uh, but, you know, next year you're going to have four power conferences, so you could actually, you know, theoretically just have the conference champ go in, but whatever. Um, do you want to go second, or do you yeah. want to hold your – is yours I'll really, go, really, I'll really go good? because I feel like it kind of pegs off of what Brian okay. is saying there about how this was really kind of set up from the beginning to have a – failure like this when you have five power five conferences and four spots eventually you could have 
four conference, five conference champions and one of them not get in, I, I think we all kind of bought into the marketing at first that this was a playoff. But in reality, it never was a playoff. It's an invitational. Um, you know, we just had Florida State just won a national championship undefeated in soccer. Did you see this? They beat Stanford uh, undefeated season. 64 teams played in the NCAA soccer tournament. That's a playoff. There was this was never a playoff. It was an invitational, and which means you are trying to put together the two best matchups that you think will produce the best games. Putting on a TV show, really. Yeah. So it was never it was never a playoff. It was always an invitational. Next year it will Ironic be Ironic because that was what you uh, that's what you accused me of doing last week that I was playing TV show exec yes. and just trying to get the best matchups when yeah. it's just actually quite the opposite. I was accurate in that, too. But here's the thing. So this is expanding next year, yeah. but this is who I would place a lot of the blame on for this Florida State situation. The ACC commissioner, Jim Phillips, has some blood on his hands, along with the Big Ten commissioner, who he's not anymore, but Kevin Warren was at the time, and the Pac-12 commissioner. Because, remember, we could already have – we could be going into a play a 12 team playoff right now. Um, they formed this alliance in 2021. The this committee was meeting to talk about an expanded playoff to talk about how do we get to a 12 team playoff faster. And they present this model to the 10 commissioners of the FBS conferences, along with Notre Dame's athletic director because Notre Dame's special. So they get a voice in the room, too. And the idea was to get this 12 team format approved as quickly as possible as early as January of 2022 with implementation for the 2023 season. And so this was moving down the track. And then all of a sudden, you have the shocking news over that summer of 2021 that Texas and Oklahoma are bolting to the SEC. And then these commissioners start getting concerned and they start grumbling about uh, this realignment. And so this the next meeting that they have about expanding the playoff, uh, the ACC, the Big Ten and the Pac-12 form what they call the alliance. And, you know, they're, they're, this alliance was supposed to stick together on these major decisions in college football. And so there, there was a lot of concern among them about how many teams the SEC was trying to get into a 12-team format. So it came down to a vote. Uh, it had to be unanimous to expand. And the vote was eight in favor, three against. The three against were these three alliance members who mm -hmm. said, let's put the brakes on this. So it took another nine months to get it done. And if it hadn't been for that, Florida State would we'd be in a 12-team playoff now. Florida State would be, no, they wouldn't be the four seed, but they would be the five seed, which I kind of think um, that there's an advantage in that too because you get to host a home game to start off in the yeah. playoffs. So I, I think that the ACC commissioner has, you know, to answer for some of this too. Hmm. Uh, both of those, extremely valid. Uh, let me go down kind of the emotional ride that I went down. Okay, first it was uh, who, who who can I blame? Because that's when things don't work out the way I want them to. The first thing I'm going to do is I got to blame somebody, right? It's usually the and dog. It's, yeah, it's yeah the dog. Someone. We'll get there. So first it was it was Texas, right? Big Twelve, weaker conference in my opinion than the ACC. Worst loss to out of the four one loss teams. You know they lost a twelve ranked uh, Oklahoma. Uh, took a fourth quarter comeback to beat unranked Houston by a touchdown. Overtime field goal to beat Kansas State at home. Uh, they put it in cruise control against TCU and squeaked out a three-point win. Okay. But maybe not. Maybe okay. not Texas. So you picked on Texas. Then, then. Okay. then I thought, well, Alabama. Because, of course, Chris and Brian are fans, and I really can't wait to go after Alabama. And I said, well, they lost to Texas at home. They looked awful against USF. One score game until the last 30 seconds. Uh, they squeaked out a one score win against unranked AM, Arkansas at home, and a Hail Mary against Auburn. That's not very impressive. It wasn't okay, a Hail then, Mary. It wasn't a Hail Mary. Yeah, it it was, was a pass. You're right. You're right. It was offensive pass interference on a Hail Mary, uh, to clarify. Okay. okay. Then I thought, you know what? Let's bring it a little bit closer to home. You know, Tate Rodemaker, Brock Glenn. Like, uh, Rodemaker, 48% passing uh, against Florida, 130 yards passing. Uh, why couldn't you just have played a little bit Whoa, better? Wait, are you blaming Bro the victims hang on, here? Are hang you on, hang on. I'm taking you through the emotional roller coaster. Okay. I thought, Glenn, you passed for 55 yards against Louisville, 38% passes, uh, you know, completion percentage. Like, couldn't you do just a little bit better, a hair better? Maybe maybe you get in. And then I thought, you know what? That's not right. I can't, I can't blame the players. I, I even looked at Mike Norvell. I thought, why was the starting quarterback playing against North Alabama? Why? Okay, that's not fair either. He's the reason there. He's, in large part, a big reason why they are there. 
Ultimately, it came back to all roads meet at the NCAA, okay? They are to blame for most of the issues that you have with the modern look of college football and all the problem areas for being an abject failure, NCAA, allowing a third-party committee to hijack this process, failing to evolve with the times, and that, that goes across a myriad of different areas, uh, not properly addressing championship season better earlier if, if you look at the NCAA, they obviously have jurisdiction over the Division II football playoffs, yeah. which, by the way, semifinal this weekend, Harding, my alum. Uh, are we, we are go, one of the final four. Go, we have it Bison? Made it, and it wasn't, it, and it wasn't picked by a committee. Bisons. Bisons. Double plural. Right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. They, there's 162 Division II football teams. So they have more D2 football teams than there are certainly FBS teams, but even D1. Okay. They, they organized 28 teams that make the postseason into four super regions with seven teams in each super region. The top seeded team, they get a bye, and then they play a playoff format. And then they wrap things up before the D1 slate is even over. And you know what? There's not a there's no confusion over it. It's a playoff system. We understand. I mean, there is a, obviously a little bit of subjectivity when it comes to the top 28 teams, but that's how it, it's, it's decided every year. And there's never any hubbub over it. It's very crystal clear. So, yeah. again, we, we get back to this 12-team playoff. I'm glad it's expanding. And for all the reasons we listed last week, yes. And then to add some this week because there's no discussion afterward. Once you go through a 12-team playoff, you know, hands down, this is the team that won it and deserves it on the field. It's not a beauty contest. It's, it doesn't come down to some third party to weigh in on who they think will be a better team when these two teams face It's none of of that it's how sports is supposed to be decided and that is scoreboard at the end of the day scoreboard good right. speech can i say one more fun thing no yes go ahead <laughs> you'll like this um before we had the playoff format we had the bcs yes remember this is yes. how we've evolved we we had computers deciding this for us if that was awful too different uh, but, but listen did you see who the bcs would have in the because no, no. they're still the computers are still out there oh. computing computers yeah. never <laughs> die so these algorithms are still <laughs> spitting out formulas. Did yeah. you see? Did you see Brian? This is fun. Number one, Michigan. Number two, Washington. Number three, Alabama. Number four, Florida State. Number five, Texas. Yeah. So somebody was going to be upset if this were still BCS. Well, what's funny is that that was what the four I had. So you know, I was on on track with the BCS. Yeah. Anyway. You know, they they ruined it all when they started this four-team stuff when they didn't like Bama and LSU getting in in 2011 and having an all-SEC final. So should have left it alone. All right, let's move on to a different subject. Now that that has been settled and we await the bowl games, right now we're in this kind of middle season, which is portal season. Uh, a oh, lot of teams have a, a lot of all the, uh, all the players. They're all free agents now. Everybody's entering the portal. They want to go make some big money. I'm sure you heard Matt Rule, Nebraska head coach, saying that the going prize to get a plug-and-play quarterback nowadays through the portal is one to two million dollars. Some quarterbacks are making six to seven million dollars. Okay, so pulling the veil back a little bit about all that money that is going into. I mean, that's what that's what modern college football looks like nowadays, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Big time money, uh, and on top of that, the NCAA has a new proposal. And let me just read a quick summary as to what this new proposal is, to, so that they can get into the. NIL game. All right. Their new proposal um, where a school can directly compensate athletes uh, as an alternative to that booster led collectives that we see all over the landscape now. Mm -hmm. uh, schools can choose to be a part of this new subdivision. So the schools can opt in or opt out. Members are permitted to strike NIL deals with their own athletes through a trust fund. The schools within the new subdivision will be required to distribute to athletes thousands of dollars in additional educational related funds without limitation without limitation. There is no cap on the amount a program can provide an athlete. The entry is minimum $30,000 per year per athlete into this trust fund for at least half of the school's countable athletes. Now, the schools do have to abide by Title IX if they're going to be part of this subdivision, uh, assuring that 50% of the investment will be directed towards women's athletes, women athletes as well, uh, allowing institutions to purchase the NIL rights of their athletes 
So it, it would be extraordinarily costly for these uh, athletic departments to do this, but a lot of people saying that this is kind of a step towards what they believe will be inevitable, and that is revenue sharing within college uh, athletics. So uh, your thought on this new proposal by the NCAA to get in the NIL game and, and have their slice? Oh, gosh, I don't know. There was a lot. There's some of it uh, that, it, you know, it's – I'm still a little fuzzy on here. I, I, I thought it was, I thought it was interesting that one thing that it's going to do is going to give the conferences the ability to decide uh, scholarship numbers and uh, coach. Uh, I believe no, it's no, in, number individual institutions. Yeah, though, isn't in it? The, I thought it was conferences. Um, hmm. I just wonder. I think that what this is going to do is create more separation between the big, well-heeled programs and and those that don't have and what this will eventually lead to is uh, an, another separate super division and it's kind of going to point us all down this road that i think we're already going down where you have almost like this you know nfl light nfl minor league we call it that where um you have maybe 40 50 programs that are in this like you know super division super league and and they're playing for something else because they have they have the money you said a minimum each each student athlete gets a minimum of thirty thousand, but there's no cap i mean they can spend whatever on players right so th that is yeah how much that they pour in for each athlete right so they can give as much as they want uh into that program um but it I don't does, know. We does. talk about policing this a little bit better rather than have this kind of obscure in the shadowy collectives. And, You're right. It and takes how the much boosters. money is going where. And I think that this gives a little bit more authority over the program to be able to say this money goes there, this money goes there. Um, they, they still don't want to say it's like a pay for play, but um, I mean, you do the maths, right? So. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm still kind of fuzzy on the details on this thing, and that's probably exactly how they want it right now to, to not fully understand exactly what's going on. But I think if the point is to have, you know, a little bit more, it seems like this direction makes the playing field a little bit more level, in fact. Um, Okay, so that, you, you don't see it as leading to like a, a clear delineation between these well, larger uh, programs. But here's the thing. At the end of the day, like it's opt-in, opt-out. So mm -hmm. you don't have to be you a part of it. So it. if yeah. you have these giant collectives that are being booster-led and you have a ton of money through that and that's more financially beneficial, then, then, then maybe that's better for certain programs. Yeah. Um, so – I don't know what to make of it, but I, I think it's an interesting development that that this is this is just the next chapter, right? This is the this is schools now being in charge of the NIL, being in charge of doling out the money and having licensing deals for their athletes. It's just like it I don't know how a head coach or an athletic director has time to do their actual job now that this has been added to it. Like it's You'll crazy. You'll need a whole new department. This yeah. will be your NIL licensing department. All right, let's jump into the portal. Uh, who are the? Are no, you transferring? Are you going to another uh, podcast? Yeah, I am. I am. They're going to pay me one to two dollars uh, per episode. Um, all right. So biggest names in the portal right now, and, and there is you know some some guys that started this last year that are now with. The, free agents so a couple interesting names that i see on here i mean riley leonard from duke but i think that one's already uh, it, everybody's assuming he's going from duke to notre dame no, yes he's taking an official visit to notre dame okay i believe yeah and, and he i think he also put was he the one that put uh not interested like you could when you enter the portal you could say like don't contact it's, it's match.com it's a yeah. dating service right. yeah there's so you have to he, yeah. he went through the step of doing it but that means he's already decided right. that he's going to go and i yeah. think he had that designation uh but cam ward he was the quarterback at, at uh, yeah. washington state he's really a really dynamic guy, guy. yeah uh, kyle mccord from ohio state apparently um he has not been you know day has not said you're my guy next year right. so uh, the, the portal works both ways. It's almost like Dave said, hey, buddy, why don't you jump in that portal? We got Devin Brown here yeah. lined up and ready to the go. The portal giveth and the portal yeah. taketh. Um, Dylan Gabriel is an interesting one, too, from Oklahoma. So, How and, does he have any eligibility left? Uh, all, there's so many guys that, yeah. are, like, go, that are playing like a, a seventh year. Is I Bo Nix coming COVID. back? I don't <laughs> right. Yeah, he probably could. Yeah, yeah, find a loophole. Yeah, but yeah so Dylan Gabriel, uh, speculation he may follow Jeff Levy, his OC Mississippi to Mississippi State, State yeah. or he's also been uh, talking to Oregon, you know, okay. and and maybe USC. But that's a I, that's a he, he was great this season. That's yeah. a, he could probably make five or six million dollars. Golly, that's so crazy. Uh, DJ Uyunglele again transferring. Yeah. 
See now, but I think is he not grad? He's is he not a graduate transfer? Because if you are not a graduate transfer, you have to sit out of here. Right, still, right. Yeah, he's I, he's probably got two degrees by now. Okay. Uh, at Tyler Van Dyke, Miami. Oh, how about this? FSU reportedly uh, is, is getting or has you know offered uh, Dante Moore UCLA. UCLA. Yeah. He was like a five star coming out of high school. He kind of struggled a bit this year, but yeah. a lot of talent. And that's also you know when they when they are transferring players and their portal players they have they get a new ranking right they have yeah. like a new star system yeah. so it's like whatever you were in high school fine but now this is your opportunity to kind of relaunch yourself uh, after having gotten some college years under your belt don't and you think the players love that getting to have getting to be you know courted again getting to have their wings kissed yeah. again yeah well especially since first go round it was just simply a scholarship yeah. and maybe <laughs> like a cool locker and some yeah. swag and now it's yeah. five million dollars yeah a little Golly. better than the cold tub. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's uh, the game has changed, but uh, this is portal season, so there will be some uh, teams with some new quarterbacks. And you know, the one thing is, is that the the, the era of like rebuilds, like a coach comes in and hey, you got to give me three years. Yeah. Like those days are gone. Yeah. Man. I mean. So expect new coaches to get fired quicker, <laughs> quicker trigger fingers. All right, very good. Uh, uh, coming up on the other side. So it is uh, an interesting season in, in baseball as well because it, the winter meetings took place this week, and there are a lot of trade rumors, plus there's free agents. The big fish, Shohei Otani, where is he going to end up? We'll discuss it coming up on the other side when the No Off Days podcast continues. All right. Welcome back to the Nod Pod. In the last segment, we talked about portal season, how much money there is to be made now mm -hmm. in that, Chris. But that pales in comparison to what happens during the winter meetings in baseball because we got free agents dealing, we got trades talking, everybody's got the rumor mills swirling, and of course it all right now, like the big fish, as it has been for like a year now, is Shohei Otani. Where is he going to go? And uh, and then I, I, that is like the first domino. Like no team wants to make a move until Shohei lands because for free agents, he's going to set the price. And then for teams that are willing to make moves, you know, if they're in the if they're in play for him, then obviously they have to plan accordingly. So Otani, fr from the most recent reports, uh, you got him staying in uh, Southern California, potentially staying with the Angels. Okay. Uh, they're not out of play yet. Uh, going up the road to play for the Dodgers, which to me sounds like it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, the Toronto Blue Jays are in – they've got uh, – they're in this race as well, which is interesting because I, I, from early reports it was that Shohei wanted to be on the West Coast so that it was a, a easier trip back home and, you know – I don't know. Maybe he thinks Toronto is where Vancouver is. Is that is that? Possible? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, you go. Which way do you go? You yeah. take a right. It's yeah. going to take you X number of hours. Take yeah. a left out of uh, Canada. It takes you either way. You're probably about halfway there, right? Right. Um, so, and then you got the Cubs and you got the Giants, which is intriguing as well. But he's he's the big fish setting the market for guys like Cody Bellinger, uh, free agents like Matt Chapman. Even it even affects pitchers. Like pitchers are holding out, and there's some big ones too, because they want to see what that market is is going to be set at. So, uh, this is one of those situations where everybody obviously they want their deal, they want to sign it, but it, it pays to wait, right? Because yeah. you want to see who's who's making that dough before you. Uh, Blake Snell is another one of those guys, free agent. Uh, Jordan Montgomery, another free agent. So. It'll be interesting. Some of the trade names that are, are popping up. So Padres Juan Soto, talented player. Mm -hmm. uh, he's one of those guys that's being dangled. And then closer to home, the Rays, uh, you know, this this could just be talk. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not with Tyler Glass now. But there's some other names that have kind of entered the fold, too, in Randy Rosarena and Isak Paredes. Oh, no, so, not my yeah, Randy. Yeah, Randy what? Land. Can you imagine? We got Randy keep... Land in any other venue? I mean, it just it has to be at the Trop. It's got to right? be the Trop. I wonder yeah. if they'd keep it if he left. Uh, maybe yeah. if they hire another Randy or another, sign another Randy. Got to get another Randy. I, um, I, don't, I don't want him to get rid of Randy or uh, or really Glass now. Um, and who else did you say with the race? Isak Paredes. Okay, yeah, he was so baseman. productive last yeah. year. But he was, a, he was a good get from the Tigers a couple years back. I, I mean, here's the thing with Glass now. He's set to make $25 million. So, I mean, you know the Rays. Yeah, the they, guy is a work. walking injury. He, he's battled through a lot. Uh, and you could get a lot for him. So you hate to see him go because when he's when he's healthy and he's he's, he's doing good, his he's thing. good. Yeah, but when he's not there, you know, plus it, the money. I mean, it's it's just going to come down to that. Yeah. Uh, Randy Rosarena is a guy. It's interesting because they still I think have three years of team control on his deal. 
So, I mean, that the asking price would be quite high to get him uh, for many of the teams. So, but it's one of those things. I, I swear, the, the 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 Rays they hit about ninety percent clip on their on their moves. I mean, yeah. I got to kind of go back to figure out like the real like the last bad trade that they made. Most of them work. Blake Most Snell, of them pan maybe. Out. And a lot of these guys are guys that they got through trade. In fact, all of them were, all three of these guys. Yeah. And they, they all recouped more than they gave up yeah. for them. I mean, Randy came over from the cards. He wasn't even starting. I don't even remember who they gave up to get Randy. Uh, BK, if you remember, let me know. Uh, Isak, that was a, the Austin Meadows deal to the Tigers. Mm-hmm. And, and Meadows just went like ice cold when he went to Detroit. Ray saw that coming, yeah. And then Tyler Glass now, that, that was part of the Chris Archer deal that they got Meadows in as well. And Glass now just became a star after they got him. So it's kind of like, I mean, you hate to say it, it's so cliche, but it's kind of like in, in Eric Neander or the Ray's front office we trust. You it's kind of like to, they, yeah. they tend to hit these things. And then there's another big name to keep an eye on, if I can say it correctly. Yoshinobu Yamamoto. So, oh, I, yeah. I don't, Jap- know if, I don't know if that's right, but I like how you said Japanese it. Japanese player uh, coming over, pitcher, and uh, he's supposed to be like the next big thing, like maybe like a $200 million guy. So, anyway, that's to keep your eye on. All right, okay. let's get into the NFL. I know that the baseball talk was long enough for you. Let's jump back into football. That was all right, we're we're going to okay. do sizzle or fizzle, all right? As we, oh. we kind of hit like this last quarter stretch of the NFL season, teams that are in playoff contention – who are the teams that are sizzling right now? You like their trajectory. You like where they're going. You think playoff team okay. or a team that maybe was faking the funk a little bit, and now they're starting to fizzle. Not an obvious one, right, like the Cowboys or the Niners. But yeah, yeah, I mean, the ones I got are, are fringe. Okay, right now, so. good. I like the fringers, too. Okay. Give me. I got a sizzler. Give me a sizzler. Woo. Uh, All you can eat shrimp at the sizzler. Mm, with a Twizzler. How about Green Bay? How, how about the pack? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. playing so well. Yeah. Won three in a row. Jordan Love looks very comfortable. Mm-hmm. Receivers are clicking now. The Watson and, and Romeo Dobbs. Uh, defense is still good. And I look at this. They have the easiest remaining strength of schedule. Yeah. Uh, cur- and they're currently seventh in the NFC But standings. wait a minute. They play the Bucks. What are you saying? Well, they've got some other teams <laughs> yeah. worse than the Bucks on yes. there. So I, I, I think they're about to sizzle. They're 6-6 six and six now. I think they're about to take off. Yeah, their defense has, has been pretty rock solid, too. It helps. Uh, when love is not turning the ball over. So yes. that, that certainly yeah. helps. Um, I will – they were on my sizzle list as well. Um, I took your sizzler, didn't I? But I, I'm going to go to my number two sizzling team right now, and I'm going to go the Denver Broncos, also coming in at 6-6. Six and six. So right there in the wild card picture, uh, they had a five-game win streak. It was snapped last week against the Texans. Texans, uh, they, they are in a sizzling group as well. So I like yeah. them. Uh, very explosive passing game. Uh, I think the Broncos' defense has kind of been leading the way. They lead the NFL in turnovers right now. And and then their their offense is not – it's not sexy, but it's balanced. Uh, their run game uh, is is kind of – it's pretty good, and they got a, they got a sneaky vet at quarterback. So yeah. they kind of have the pieces here that uh, if they can continue to force turnovers on the defensive side, then I kind of like where they're heading. Can I bolster your argument a little too? Oh, uh, look do. at who please they got do. remaining. The Patriots, yeah. the Raiders, and yeah. two against the hapless Chargers. I mean, that looks good for Denver. Okay. They do have to play your Lions, but aside from that, I mean, if you, so, if you're saying four, four of the next, you know, five games are winnable, then very winnable. Then you're at ten wins. Yeah. You're, you're in the you're in the postseason, even yeah. at nine, maybe. You know, so, yeah. yeah. Maybe you don't win both against the Chargers, right? Um, okay, you give me do. give me some give me some fizzlers. Yeah, about to fizzle. Sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna have some uh, some of my buddies come after me after this, but my, my Steelers are about to. You, you know, think so? Not my huh? Steelers, your Steelers are about to fizzle. Yeah. Offense going in the wrong direction after firing Matt Canada. Not that I don't think that was the right move, but still not going in the right direction. Uh, Kenny Pickett's about to miss a couple of games. Tough stretch coming up, including games against the Ravens. The Bengals, who have proved feisty with Jake Browning somehow. Uh, the Colts that are sneakily good and the Seahawks. So they're 75 now. I think they're headed the wrong way. Okay. Well, the Seahawks are one of my fizzling teams right now, but I'm going to uh, – my top – My fizzler versus your fizzler. My, my top fizzler is the Bills, actually, right now. Okay. Uh, yeah. Very disappointing season, sitting at 6-6. Six and six. Uh, Here's the issue. I mean, this team can't win on the road. That's, that's like number one. Four of their five losses this year uh, – or four of their five road games this year have resulted in losses. Uh, Josh Allen is a turnover machine, first in the AFC, 13 picks. Um, and he's thrown a pick in eight straight games now. And he's their whole running game. And they still, you talk about future schedule, they still have KC, they got Dallas, they got Miami, 
And then this Chargers team that, you know, you know, could they show up one game? I don't know, but they, they that one's in L.A. Yeah. So those are four games. Those aren't – I mean, those are tough, man. Oh, I mean, man. They, they could take three losses at least down the stretch. The Bills' window was closing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, well, at least this season. It's not, I mean, I'm not giving up on Josh Allen just yet, but uh, that's don't. right. All right, uh, BK, you had to listen to all the sizzle, fizzle talk, and uh, I don't know. D- did you – have you thought of a team or yeah, a sizzler I mean, or a fizzler? Kind of disagree with Cato a bit about the Colts being a fizzler. I, I didn't mean, say the Colts. The Steelers? Say, he said the Steelers. Oh, I thought you said the Colts. I'm sorry. Yes, I, I would disagree with me on that too, but no, that's yeah, not what I said. That would have been a horrible take the by Cato. Colts. Fake Cato. What are you doing? The Colts are sizzling right now. Okay, BK's got a sizzler. I would say the yeah, Colts. Yeah, but like, uh, what are those wins? I feel like it's a little bit of fool's gold. But mm. but you're playing, who's leading the division? Jacksonville, and they lost their quarterback. Ah. So the Colts have won four straight. Houston's still winning. So that whole division outside of Tennessee. But, BK, they've got to play my fizzling Steelers, the Texans, the Bengals, and the Falcons. You're right. They could they could take off. I don't know. Yeah. It's Gardner Menchu. I mean, he's a guy you want to root for, right? You're right. But is he a guy that could take you there? Right? Yeah, that's that's the question. Okay. That wow. was fun. Maybe we'll bring back Sizzler Fizzler. It, and have a Twizzler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Hey, coming up on the other side, we'll get some other hot takes around the NFL because uh, we have our guest picker, uh, who's you know he, he's always sizzling, right? Yeah. Sizzling hot, right? Especially if you line him up 40, 50 yards out, he's going to boot it through. Martin Gramatica right. is our guest picker on the other side to get you squared away for these Sunday and Monday night games. It is time to do a little picking on the No Off Days podcast. Welcome back in and our special guest picker. I mean, you know the face already. Legendary Bucks kicker Martin Gramatica joins kicker. us. Guest kicker. He's a picker. Yeah. He's a kicker and a guitar picker as well. Yes. Uh, welcome on in. How are things? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks yeah. for having me. I appreciate it. Man, this is uh, this has been an incredible Bucks season. One that we didn't think, you know, two games below 500, and yet here they are, a game out of first place. So. Well, that's a good thing. Is that. Even though we've had a roller coaster ride, because that's basically what it's felt like, we still have a chance. So that's all you want. You want to have a chance in December. It's good to be in the NFC South, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's also a new author, too. Beyond oh. the Uprights. This this book available at Amazon. Tell us a little bit about what went into this process and what it's like to now be an author. Right. No, it's uh, it's something that I've had because I'm originally from Argentina and I didn't even know football existed when I moved to this country. And then all of a sudden, I'm I'm winning a Super Bowl with the Buccaneers. So they, so I've always been told, you know, you need to tell your story. And uh, all of a sudden, just you know, dove into it with uh, Carlos, who does the play-by-play for the Bucs, yeah. and then um, Alfonso, a, a author from Spain. We worked together. It took us two years. Um, but finally released the English version about two months ago. The Spanish version uh, we just released last week. So, uh, so it's in Spanish, it's available in Spanish as well. But just tell my whole journey. Um, I had a really uh, violent father and childhood. So I wanted to tell the story. So if somebody, and not, not for people to feel sorry for me, but right. it's more for them to react because I didn't react until I had my first son. Once I f- had my first son, I realized how much I love my kid. I could never do the things that were done to me. So I'm like, man, this is not right. That's that's when we broke ties, and yeah. uh, for me, that was my son literally saved my life. So mm-hmm. I want to see if hopefully this book helps people. That's awesome, man. So more than just uh, football yeah. stories, uh, right. life stories there. So go out and get you the copy. All right, let's get into our games this week, Martine. Uh, we're gonna put you on the clock first, <laughs> and right out of the gates, we got Bucks Falcons. Uh, one o'clock game this Sunday in Atlanta. So uh, who you got? It's a two and a half point uh, Falcon uh, favorite in this one. What do well, you think? I'm riding the hot hand of the Bucks. We just won at home, so we're gonna we're gonna go to Atlanta because we understand the importance of this game. We have to win to be able to win our division. So I'm, I've got the Bucks. It really does feel like a must win against this team, particularly. It, it does. I mean, I was gonna pick the Falcons until I saw Martine in here. I, I wasn't sure <laughs> we were. I, it was a surprise to me that you were a guest <laughs> picker. Kick you, were, you in the shins too. You, you better su- look out. Surprise picker to me. So yeah, I I, I don't think the um you know the Falcons are gonna find out that they're not playing the Jets this week. I think right. it's gonna. Be a little tougher a for him. Better offense, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. go with the Bucks too, covering that two and a half points. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I don't, not to finish off the trifecta here and sound like just uh, you know, 
on the bandwagon. But I think that, you know, the Falcons have had a little bit of musical quarterback. It, Taylor Heineke, I feel like the offense operates a little better under him, but the, they didn't produce wins. Uh, so Desmond Ritter again. This is take two. This was a sloppy game earlier in the season. Very low scoring. I think the Bucks offense has evolved a little bit. So I'm going to take the Bucks and to cover the points. All right. Bills at Chiefs. Two of the better teams, we think, in the AFC. Uh, this one in Kansas City. Chiefs coming in. Two and a half point favorites. Martin, who you got? Well, I work with the biggest Chiefs fan I've ever seen in my life. Oh, okay. So if I don't pick so, the yeah, Chiefs, life's gonna be tough I'm going to be in trouble. So <laughs> I'm going to go the Chiefs. And the Bills have had more of an up-and-down season than us they because they, they were expected to win and expected to do well. They've just been – you just don't know what they get from the Bills. So yeah. I'm going to go Chiefs for sure. Yeah, you really don't want some key injuries to that Bills defense too. And I think the Chiefs, you don't want to catch them in this spot coming off that loss. Uh, so I'm going Chiefs as well. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> I mean, look, the Chiefs, I to me, they have uh, wide receiver core issues uh, outside of Travis Kelsey. But the biggest factor here is, is Taylor Swift going to be in attendance? If oh, she's in yeah. attendance, Chiefs win. I mean, they're not going to lose. How often does Patrick Mahomes lose back-to-back games? So give me the Chiefs to cover at home. By the way, the Bills, very bad team on the road. Uh, Eagles at Cowboys, the Sunday night kickoff from Philadelphia. And, uh, no, sorry, from Dallas. And Cowboys, three-and-a-half-point favorites. See, normally I would think, okay, Cowboys at home, but I'm thinking, is Tony Romo holding? <laughs> because no. if he's no. holding, I'm going with no. Philly. Yeah, well, he's in the booth, so I think <laughs> okay, he's, okay, he's a far you never know. Away, right? <laughs> okay, so if Tony Romo's not holding, okay. then I'm going to go with the Cowboys. All right. Shots <laughs> fired on the holder tonight. Man, I love hey, that. <laughs> um, it's special teams humor. If you don't know, you don't know. You know what I'm saying? He's a quarterback. Right, right exactly. Let's see, who is the Eagles long snapper? Um <laughs> You know, I went with the Eagles last week, and they, it burned me. Uh, the Eagles got the beat the Cowboys at Philadelphia. It, it looks like two teams kind of headed in different directions here. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to pick. I'm going to say the Eagles. You know, they they really want to clean up the mistakes that cost them. Uh, last week against the Niners, and I think the Eagles get it done in the Big D. Yeah, so they, they suffered their second loss of the season last week. That, that was a tough loss against a very good Niner team. They got another very good Cowboy team that I feel like is peaking a little bit right now. Both sides of the ball, Dallas at home. Uh, because I picked the Eagles last week and, and they hurt me, I'm going to go with the Cowboys this week. I hopefully I have not learned my lesson. We'll see. All right. We got Titans. We got a couple Monday night games. Titans visiting the Dolphins. And this, we have to make sure you are picking against the points here. Yes. It's a 14 and a half point spread. Uh, Dolphins, of course, two touchdown favorites in this one on Monday night. Who you got, Martin? I love Mike McDaniels. His press conferences are comical. He's, he's um, a comedian. Yeah, I mean, sure. he's – and when you look at him, I said, there's no way this guy can be successful in the NFL. And he's showing everybody that, <laughs> right. you know, we're all right. wrong. Yeah. So, I'm going to go with the Dolphins. They, they score 70 points in one game. Yeah. yeah 14 yeah. points is nothing. Tennessee's looked awful. Yeah. So, you think they're going to top – they're going to oh, cover yeah, the 14? They're going to win by more than 14, no okay. question. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The Dolphins are the best at beating up on bad teams. They <laughs> love to expose, you know, teams' weaknesses, and, and they do it better with their offensive scheming. Tyreek Hill will have another probably two-touchdown game. It's it's incredible the pace he's on. Like, he's positioned to, to break Jerry Rice's record, which whoever thought anyone would say that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's a no-brainer with this one. The, the fighting of uh, Barista. Mike, Dan Mike McDaniel uh, and the Dolphins get this done. Okay. I, I can't see a reason to think that the Titans can get close. Uh, maybe if they play a little keep away. I, I mean, you know, time possession game. I don't know. I, I, don't, I still don't think. I, see, I, I think the Dolphins <laughs> by at least 20. Yeah. So yeah. let me go Dolphins too. All right. The other Monday night game, uh, Packers at Giants. Packers six and a half point favorites. They seem to have found their uh, sea legs as of late. Uh, who you got, Martin? I have to go with the Packers. I mean, they, I don't think uh, the coach has lost in December. I think I just saw that stat. He's undefeated right. 16 and 0 yeah, in December. True. So I think it's going to keep going, especially with the Giants team. I know they got the little Italian boy. Everybody's excited about. You know, he's like the hometown <laughs> yeah, hero. Little Tommy DeVito. <laughs> yeah. Right, right? But I don't know if he's got enough enough to beat yeah. the uh, Packers. Is he related to Danny? Uh, I'm sure he's, somewhere, he's got somewhere the along the, the way. He's, he's the be. Arnold Schwarzenegger in that set of twins. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I kind of dislike that we agree so much, but maybe we're just maybe maybe this makes me feel better that Martin Grammatic and I are on the same page here. But I, I agree. I think the uh, the Giants are kind of struggling. The Packers are have won three in a row. Uh, Jordan Love looks so confident in yeah. that offense yeah. right now. 
defense has come along, so uh, I'm rolling with the Packers here. I'm going to deviate from you guys a little bit here, not because I think the Giants are going to You're going to deviate. Yeah, so deviate. Yeah. Uh, not because I think the Giants are going to win, but I do think they're going to play a little bit tougher game at home. Uh, maybe the defense slows. I, I mean, the Packers defense is great too. Uh, yeah, but let me go Giants uh, to to cover at least those points. But I think Packers win the game. All right, we have a fantasy lock. I know you're you're huge in the fantasy game, right, Martin? <laughs> I told totally you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. this guy's got like seven leagues going at once. Who's yeah, your no. kicker? <laughs> well, you know, if I had to pick, I would go with Tucker. Or, well, actually, you know, Chase has done a phenomenal job. So I mean, I always I always like to play, pick our home teams. But no, he's he's joking because I am not a fantasy. <laughs> I my daughter made me and called me names for yeah. not being smart when it comes to fantasy football because I had my quarterback back playing against my defense and she reminded me because I had no idea so I figured I might as well just quit while I'm ahead I'm done with fantasy but I, I'll give you some some right, insight well, here you so know? you don't get the ridicule from your daughter uh, you got to nail this fantasy lock who do you got I'm gonna go with Tyreek Hill I mean, how can you go wrong? This guy scores. Right. You, you say you're going to score two touchdowns. That was Chris's yeah. pick that last, was my week, last week. week. Yeah. Was, yeah. It okay. paid off. Yeah. yeah, He scored 31 fantasy points. But that yeah. was a, kind of a no-brainer, too. And maybe yeah. this is, too. This might be as well. So I'm going with Tyree Hill. You okay. can't go wrong with Tyree yeah, Hill. No, I think you're right on to something. Okay. Well, who you got there, Chris? I'm going to go um, Amon Ra St. Brown. I said his name right, didn't yes, I? Did. I didn't say St. Yes. Brown. Yeah. Yes. Amon Ra St. I, I, I like the matchup with the Bears. Um, I think he's really explosive, and, and Jared Goff's been dealing well. I'm going to go with Amon Ra. Yeah. Unless he's on your fantasy team, then he I'm going to pick. He again. certainly is. I know you're lot. You're loaded with lions. Yeah, I got a lot of those. But yeah, he's good, and he's coming off a slow week too. Yeah. So he's probably yeah. due. Uh, I'm going to go with another guy that's that's on my reserve list on my own fantasy team here, uh, Puka Nakua, uh, Rams receiver. So, you know, I think that he is due. Uh, let's go Puka Nakua for a big game with Matthew Stafford. Very good. Uh, make sure you go out and get you a copy Beyond the Uprights, available at Amazon, and uh, find out, you know, a little bit more than you thought you knew about your, your favorite kicker here with the Buccaneers, Martin Gramatica. Martin, thanks for coming oh, in, my thank friend. thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate you're the it. Best. Thank you. No, I thanks appreciate it. Thanks for all the great work you're doing with the Family Foundation, too. Awesome thank, how you guys you help much. the veterans in our community. Uh, by the way, there are some cool stories, too, so it's not all bad. No, and Tony Dungy, is, there's quotes about all my teammates so i don't want people to think that's uh one of those negative books there is some really cool no, stories a, as well yeah well-rounded we got some football <laughs> stories and all that yeah Mar in fact tony wrote the uh, forward for forward this one for, right? yes very yes. good stuff that's a that's a certainly a book that's certified if dungy has got his stamp of <laughs> approval on it very good go out and get you a copy beyond the uprights martin grammatica thanks for joining us we'll be right back on the other Thank side you. with our <laughs> final block having some fun with producer bk All right, time to have a little fun. Let's bring BK back in as we uh, kick off this last segment. The only tease that you gave us off the top of the show was that it had something to do with bowl games, and I, I don't think we're arguing about them. Are no. we arguing or no? Do you no. want us to argue? Okay, we'll no. do that later. Okay, we've done that. Well, we've done it quite a bit, haven't we? <laughs> All right, and we do have some props now. So you have so some whiteboards have been brought out to the set, and uh, and some. Sharpies. So okay. what, yeah, what we'll do right off the top is just going to be kind of a rapid fire, maybe 10 seconds per answer. You tell me what the uh, answer is. Write it down. We'll reveal the answers. How well you know it. We'll do that for the first couple, and then I'll hit you some other questions that you can uh, okay. that you can write down. All right. All yes. right. So you ready? Okay. Got your pins ready? Ready. Yes. All right. First one. Tell me what city these bowls are in. Okay. I'll give you the bowl. Wait, is this a speed thing? Yeah. You get 10 seconds each okay. each question. Okay. How about that? Okay. How many are you going to give us? I'll give you four. So oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we gotta have a meeting sometime. I know. <laughs> it's uh, it's my fault, guys. Sorry. It's uh, all right. Give you the bowl. You tell me what city this bowl's played in, okay? Okay. All right. Here we go. The famous toastery bowl. The famous what? Toastery bowl. Where's that being played at? Okay. Pins down. What you got? Um, I put Houston. I have no idea. I put Houston. Uh, I have no idea either. I put Baltimore. Famous toastery bowl was played in Charlotte this year. Ah. Okay. That was actually toastery. the old Bahamas Bowl. They're redoing oh, the stadium. I thought they were still calling it the Bahamas Bowl, but put, playing yeah. it in Charlotte. No, I, I get they may have, but it's now toastery bowl. Okay, you ready for toastery. next one? Okay. What, is, what is a toastery? I want to know what a toastery it's is. Like I a, know what a toastery is. Is it like a, a generic pastry, like a generic pop tart? No, it's a restaurant in Charlotte. That's a oh. that does breakfast and brunch. There you go. Hey, so. meet me at the toastery for some French toast. <laughs> it's the famous toast. Yeah. Is that how they talk in okay. Charlotte? I think it is. Okay, here's one. Quick Lane Bowl. Easy. Oh, I know that one. 
And pins that. What you got? New Orleans, baby. Uh, I got Detroit. Am I wrong? Detroit. Oh, <laughs> I was very far <laughs> south. I like how you're so confident. I oh, I got that one. Yeah. No problem. That's Here's me. the next one. The 68 Ventures Bowl. The what? 68, 68 Ventures Bowl. Hmm. And pins down. But you got big guess, Vegas. Vegas. I got Dallas. That is a Mobile. That was, is the Mobile Bowl. I was closer. Yeah, geographically okay. closer. I should know what 68 Ventures is if it's in Alabama. I have no idea what it is. Is it like a VC? <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll find out when we'll they sponsor it. that bowl that I'll watch on ESPN three. Okay, okay, last one here. This is pretty simple. Where's the Frisco Bowl played? And pins down. <laughs> I couldn't. What? I couldn't write. I, I'm sorry. What'd you write? Uh, tell me the answer, and I'll tell you what I wrote. What'd you write? What, what's your answer? It looked like it says uh, <laughs> San Francisco. <laughs> San Francisco. Uh, Scott. Uh, I got Frisco, Texas. It is Frisco, Texas. I thought that was too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody from San Francisco calls it Frisco, okay? Oh, no. I'm the Frisco <laughs> kid. <laughs> okay, these are just regular number questions. You just write the number down. You, you oh, know. wait a minute. We have more? Oh, okay. yeah, we got a few more. How many teams Always will waiting. be playing in the bowl game this year? How many teams will be playing in a bowl game this year? Uh, does this include the national championship? It's all bowl games. Doesn't the, bowl, the championship game is just a separate game. You got it? Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. What would you I, say, kiddo? I, I haven't got one right yet. 80. Okay, Scott? I'm going to say 82. 82, Scott. Boom. Okay. He's killing me. Of those bowl teams, how many has a losing record? Uh, losing record? Uh, isn't uh, six the men? Isn't that uh, six wins and you're supposed to be in, but they have. Uh, they have a few that fake. they couldn't fill some spots. Gotcha. If your school's uh, got good APR rate. Scott, Akeda, what you got? I put six. Six, Scott? I got uh, five. Five. It is one. Minnesota. Okay. The Gophers got in? Minnesota. Yeah, five and seven. Hope they send them to the Frisco Bowl. All right. <laughs> How many bowls will be played in baseball stadiums this year? Hmm. These are hard, Brian. Oh. Uh, All right. You got it? What'd I, you say? I put two. All Wait. right. Scott, what'd you say? I have four. Can you name them, Scott? Uh, well, Yankee Stadium. Okay. Um, uh, San Francisco. Frisco. Back, back I don't know what it is now. at t whatever it is. Uh, Wrigley. Uh, <laughs> okay, Scott, the, you got it, but you're the, off. The Trop? <laughs> the, does the Trop have one? No, the Trop. No, it's Trump's Chase not. Field. They have a bowl game this year. Okay. Petco Park. That's where the holiday bowl is being played. Yes. And then Fenway and Yankee. Okay. okay. I got one of them. All right. All right, and then uh, how about one more? Please, give me yeah. what I can get. How many teams will play their bowl game on their home field? On their home field? Yes. The, these questions, Brian. Well, I know Scott got them, all of them right, but you need easier ones for me. Um, home field. Hawaii usually does, but did they make a bowl? No. Uh, I'm going to say... One. I'm going to say zero. Zero. It is one. Ah! I didn't get shut out. How about that? <laughs> is it, um, is it um, Idaho? No. It is. Is it, is. is it Boise? It's uh, South Alabama playing in the 68 Ventures Bowl. You in that 68 Ventures yeah. Bowl. I'm looking this up right yeah. now. What is 68 Ventures? I think, I think, I think Brian, 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 Brian must have put this. For the girls. <laughs> hey, we're going to the 68 Ventures Bowl, girl. <laughs> Let's load up the station wagon. We're, we're going to have 68 adventures South there. Alabama's playing. Okay. What, what is South Alabama? I, I don't even. South Alabama is the, the Jaguars. Jaguars. <laughs> they beat Oklahoma State this season. They sure They're did. not a bad football team. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they offer real estate services that deliver results for clients, customers, and partners. Our bold. Go. Okay. That's all you need to know. But it's a real estate company located in beautiful Daphne, Alabama. Oh. Mm. There you Which go. I assume is close to Right Alabama. next door to Velma, Alabama. Hmm. That sounds like two ladies' names. That's Daphne two and Velma. Scooby-Doo characters. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> <clears throat> All 
I didn't watch a lot of Scooby Doo. My parents wouldn't let me watch that show when I was young. It was, yes, it was impressionable. No, it was a lot of spooky spookiness. Yeah. Oh, that was fun, BK. Yeah, uh, Boy, I, those were hard questions, man. I, I thought no, you were going to ask no, us things. He, he already did. He made the noise like he's down on himself. Yeah. It, it was fun. We like it. We like props too. Yeah, but um, I don't know what I'm going to share with our I'll, four. Any game that I beat Kato at is a good game. So that's that was. You, fun. you destroyed me. That was uh, really tough. Very good. All right. Thank you, BK. Thanks, I buddy. appreciate it. Uh, hey, that was a good show. Yeah. Talked a little bit of football, NFL, college, a little, uh, little baseball as well. We got it covered. And then we had the great Martin Grammatica in studio with us. We Much did. thanks to Martin. Thanks to our crew, uh, Chris, Ron, and second Chris right here, and, of course, BK. That'll do it. Next time uh, you check our uh, podcast out, you might want to go to fox13news.com slash nodpod. Please subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify so that you don't have to wait till Sunday night. Have I mentioned that yet? You don't have to wait till Sunday night to see our picks. You can get them earlier in the week, uh, and uh, it's sent to your phone every week, so you don't have to look for it. Big thanks to our guests, and uh, that's fun. All right, very good. Yeah. Until the next. Do you have one more? One more quote? No, I'm just. I was going to say I got to go empty the RV now. So okay. let's, let's get Until out. Until the here. next time we are off, there are no <laughs> off days. <laughs>